Hello, my name is Peter, and welcome to another project video aboard SV Silverheels, my Rhodes 22. Silverheels has a problem. Uh, she lists pretty noticeably to starboard. And I really have to conclude that I am responsible for this state of affairs. And I'd say you're looking at the reason. Uh, all this cabinetry that I added to the galley. And not only does the cabinetry itself uh, weigh quite a bit, uh, but of course, once you have cabinetry, you put stuff in it which adds to the weight and the problem. Compounding uh, this is when I uh, built the storage area uh, under the V-berth, I shifted the location of the battery uh, forward from the port side to the starboard side. So it's, it's uh, adding to the problem. The reason I did that was I thought I was balancing the boat. Um, we have one battery under the settee on the port side, and of course the outboard is on the port side. That weighs about 100 pounds. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought having the second battery also on the port side under the V-berth would tend to make the boat list to port. Um, but I find that in fact um, it's, it's the problem is the other way. So my first thought uh, was, okay, let's ship the battery back from starboard to port. Uh, unfortunately, to do that and still have it be under the V-berth, I'd have to totally redo all the cabinet work I did under there, uh, which I, I could certainly do, um, but another uh, approach came to mind. So I've taken the settee uh, out and we're looking underneath, and here is uh, the arrangement that uh, General Boats made for the battery that lives under here. And that works perfectly uh, fine. Uh, it's uh, reasonably accessible. Uh, <clears throat> but um, one of the things I noticed when I was fooling around in here one day is uh, that, uh, once again, we have an area uh, aft of the battery here, which has many, many cubic inches of space not being used. And we can't have that here aboard Silver Heels. Uh, so that was uh, the, the birth of the idea that maybe we could uh, use some of that space by having the second battery live there. And I've been scratching my head over this some and doing a lot of measurements uh, and things, and, and I th I'm pretty sure it's going to work. If it doesn't, you'll probably never see this video. So, one of the things that's going to have to happen, well, uh, this, this construction that, that uh, General Boats did is going to have to come out, and uh, the, the black line across that fiberglass uh, bulkhead there is the underside uh, of the the settee top. Um, so uh, a section of that is going to have to come out up to that line uh, in order to accommodate the second battery. So basically the, the plan is when I'm done the one battery will live pretty much in the same spot that uh, General Boats put it and the other one will uh, live further aft than that. So the theory will be that you, you drop one uh, battery into place, make a couple connections, slide it aft, and then drop the second battery into place. Um, and, and I think I figured out how to make this work. So part of making it work is this battery box I've built here in the workshop. Uh, we are standing outboard or on the hull side and uh, forward, uh, just to orient you. <clears throat> uh, 
And uh, the, the final installation will have some shelf, something like this, uh, to accommodate uh, various devices uh, like our fuses and the shunt for the battery monitor. Uh, and the uh, opening in the settee will be over this battery, and this battery will be slid aft uh, <clears throat> and be uh, much less accessible um, than the forward battery. You may notice there's some space here at the aft end, and the reason for that is that in researching all of this, I discovered that, uh, well, th these are Group 27 batteries, and Group 31 batteries are the same width. Uh, they are half an inch longer and one-eighth of an inch higher and have almost 20% more capacity in terms of amp hours. So I made the box big enough so it should fit two uh, Group 31 batteries, and we'll just slip some pieces of wood in here uh, to take up the extra space uh, in the meantime. So <clears throat> one of my concerns uh, with the practicality of this is, as I said, that the aft battery is going to be pretty inaccessible and these are regular wet cell batteries which require periodic maintenance. You check the level of the, of the fluid and add distilled water if it's low. And that should be done periodically. Um, basically, recommendation is once per month. And uh, if I make it hard to do that, I'm less, much less likely to do it. So uh, I was noodling over that and then uh, watching a YouTube video of someone else's boat. Um, he showed me uh, the solution, uh, which is this, the quick fill onboard battery watering system made by Flowrite. Uh, and what this is, is a set of manifolds that will uh, go on the batteries, re replacing uh, the caps uh, that connect up to some tubing that allow you to add uh, distilled water uh, to the batteries remotely. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and install these. Uh, and see how they look. So there is the battery watering system installed. Uh, one of my concerns was the height of the manifolds, uh, but in fact they're actually a little lower than the battery post, so that uh, turned out not to be a, an issue. So uh, <clears throat> the, the manifolds are uh, on any one battery are connected to each other uh, kind of in line with this black tube and then one battery is connected to the next with uh, another piece of tubing and then down at the end there's a little red cap uh, that blocks off the, the uh, that end and the, the filling is done uh, with this tube and I can't demonstrate it because I don't have uh, the squeeze bulb that's also part of the system uh, that uh, is sold separately and but now that I know um, that the manifolds uh, will fit okay. I can go ahead and order that. So that that connects here to this uh, quick connect fitting, and the other end of that tube will go into a jug of distilled water, and you squeeze the squeeze bulb to pump water into the batteries. And when the battery's fluid reaches uh, the proper level, um, the batteries will will stop accepting water, uh, and the squeeze bulb will firm up, and then you can disconnect and you're done. So that, that uh, another benefit of this system is I was never sure uh, when filling the uh, batteries uh, how how much fluid water to put in them, and this this eliminates that uh, worry as well. Back on the boat, uh, we've begun preparations uh, by using uh, an oscillating tool to remove uh, the battery compartment construction uh, <clears throat> provided by General Boats uh, from the boat and cut a notch uh, in the aft uh, bulkhead and we did some sanding and uh, vacuuming to clean things up. 
So we measured carefully and cut three pieces that will serve as the base for our new uh, battery box. The, the long horizontal piece is just keeping uh, the three support pieces in place while the thickened epoxy dries. Well, it's it's rare for a boat project plan to go from start to finish uh, without a change somewhere along the line, and this one uh, is no exception. If you look through the notch I cut in the bulkhead, you can probably see behind it uh, is an obstruction uh, at the top there. And what that is actually is the underside of the cockpit floor. And the, a battery will not fit under there. Um, so uh, as a result, I've had to uh, shift everything forward about five inches. So uh, back in there is uh, one of the original supports. And we've got three new supports. Uh, forward of uh, where they would have been in the original plan. So the result of this uh, change is that the forwardmost battery uh, will no longer be under the existing door in the settee. Uh, so I'll have to make that door bigger, uh, which isn't a big project, um, but it's more work. Back in the workshop, we're almost done with the uh, battery box. Uh, we've trimmed this uh, bottom outside corner off, so this will fit right up against the hull. We've, we've added a couple of cleats to the bottom, uh, which will work with the uh, supports that are underneath there and uh, help hold the battery box in place. We wouldn't want it shifting around. And we've added fiberglass to the bottom and the corners uh, to reinforce and strengthen uh, the box. And we'll be doing a little sanding to clean that up. And back on the boat, uh, the thickened epoxy has cured for the supports on the bottom. And we've added some side supports for the battery box, also attached with thickened epoxy and we'll be uh, beefing up uh, joints on all of these with some fiberglass. So the bottom and side supports have all been glassed in uh, for extra strength and hopefully uh, <laughs> that will be enough to keep the uh, batteries firmly in place. And our battery box is in place. Uh, at some point before we launch in the spring, we'll uh, mount some corner brackets uh, to the box and the side supports uh, to further tie everything together. I just don't happen to have any on hand at the moment. So we've mounted uh, a shelf on top of the side supports and that'll serve as a place to mount uh, electrical doodads like uh, fuses and similar items. And one other uh, detail of the construction here uh, I want to point out is that we've got this sliding door uh, for access uh, storage under the settee. I don't use it a whole lot, uh, but uh, the door is held in place uh, by these uh, plastic pieces. Uh, the white plastic top and bottom and I've shortened those uh, so that they stop just uh, short of the new battery box uh, and uh, this allowed me to have the battery box be a whole quarter of an inch um, further inboard uh, and otherwise and the battery box itself serves uh, the same purpose as the white plastic pieces keeping the sliding door uh, on its track. Well, there are our batteries in place in the battery box. Uh, we haven't wired anything at this point. I think that will um, wait until spring. I'm going to need 
uh, some a few new cables uh, to put it all together the way uh, I think I want it. But I have all winter to to work on that. And now our settee with our new larger battery access door uh, is in place. And uh, you can see the forward battery is totally accessible. The aft battery, uh, the negative terminal, and the aft uh, fill caps uh, are inaccessible. But of course, the fill caps don't need to be accessible because we have our new uh, quick fill system and the squeeze bulb part of it uh, just came yesterday. Uh, so I'll take a second and set that up. So we've connected the two hoses together with the quick connect fittings uh, and the other end uh, of the hose goes into the distilled water bottle and uh, I could make both of these uh, tubes obviously quite a bit shorter I'm sure we'll do that uh, and then we can start squeezing. So this is a live demonstration. I've never used it before and the batteries are accepting quite a bit of water. I expected the bulb to firm up more than it has. I mean it's kind of firm uh, but isn't really completely hard uh, but the water has stopped flowing, I can tell from the air bubbles and the connector hose. So they're not accepting any more water, and so we're done. Well, that was certainly pretty easy, and I think it's a good bet that going forward, my batteries will get their uh, periodic maintenance on a more reliable schedule than they have in the past. Uh, well, I think that will do it for this video. We won't know until spring whether the we've accomplished the primary goal, uh, which is to correct the list uh, to starboard that the boat had last season. But uh, shifting 60 pounds from starboard to port certainly uh, has to have at least improved the situation. Uh, so that's it for now, and probably it until it's time for uh, springtime projects. So thanks for watching, and have a good winter.